Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's just the top of the hour now. Uh, we're going to get started in about one minute. So we're going to let a few more people join and we will get started in about one minute. I'm going to close your door, but I can hear him. Okay. Okay. A couple minutes after the hour, we're going to go ahead and get started. First of all, I want to uh, thank everybody for taking some time. Good morning, good afternoon. We've got several people on the call today. Um, and what we're going to go through is uh, the Acumatica new user interface, as well as uh, go through some just kind of a reminder review of resources um, for Acumatica, some self-service resources. And just remind everybody where they can access that information. Um, everybody currently is muted um, in the bottom right corner of uh, of the. Uh, your little dashboard with the GoToWebinar, you should see a place where you can ask questions. We will open it up for questions um, when Patricia is done and then also at the very end. Um, but you can ask questions uh, in the meantime. Um, and with that, I am going to turn it over to Patricia to go through the new user interface. Go ahead, Patricia. Well, thank you, Rick, and good morning or afternoon, everybody, depending on where in the world you are. Um, thanks for joining us today and uh, and attending this webinar. Um, I thought it was important to once again give everybody a refresher about how to use the modern UI. It has been, uh, or I have noticed lately, that there's a lot of people out there that are still using the UI that you see on my screen today. So my goal is to give you even enough nuggets that you're gonna turn around and start using that modern UI. I can tell you that once you get used to it, you will never wanna come back to this UI. So with that said, um, let's get started. So first of all, how do I turn on the modern UI? This is the the cla they call it classic, not old, I'm sorry. This is the classic UI where we have multiple tabs and that all relate to, in this case, the general ledger. In order to turn on the modern UI, I'm gonna go to my user ID and I'm gonna go and switch to modern UI. So as you can see, it's quite different but there's a lot of great functionality here. So hopefully, um, you know, you will feel as excited about it as I am. Once we're done with this webinar, we will send you a link to this so that if you want a refresher as you're going through your day. The other thing that I want to point out is the last thing we want is for you guys to get frustrated. So if you're here and you can't figure out how to get to where you want to go, you can always go back to your <clears throat> user ID and go to your profile. And when you're in your profile, then you can click the show classic UI by default and it will switch back to the classic UI. 
So you can, for a while, until you get used to it, you can toggle between the two of them. Just remember that 2019R2, the classic UI goes away. So it is important for you guys to get used to this modern UI. So let me go ahead and switch again, and we will get started looking at all this functionality. So I'm going to go to payables because regardless of what industry you're in, all of you do payables. So first of all, as you can see, as I click on payables here, there's a fewer um, menus in my uh, items in my menu <laughs> than um, what you had before. Well, I can go ahead and show full menu and it gives me everything available in payables. So how do I do that? And this is what's cool, that the way that I use the system is different from the way that Rick uses the system, different from the way that Tim uses the system. So each one of you has the capability of taking this menu and making it yours. So we're gonna do that today. We're gonna go over here to this little gear for setup. Obviously you need to have access to, to the functionality I'm showing you uh, in order to be able to do what I'm, what I'm gonna show you. And then we're just going to check those things that we want in our quick or short menu. So I have vendors, vendors locations. If I want non-stock items, I can just go ahead and check that. And then once I am done checking those items that I would like to see, and if you see, this is the same menu items that were on your classic view. So it's just a matter of saying, this is, this is the stuff that I use all the time and that I want to see on my short menu. So when I exit out of here, this is what I have, um, what I had said that I wanted to see. So now I have my non-stock items here. One thing I wanna remind you of is, see this little star? These are my favorites. And if I wanted to, I could actually create a menu of my own with all of the of the screens that I usually use. Um, for example, these are two screens that I really like and I really use all the time. So now when I go to my favorites, those are there. So I could potentially create a menu of those screens that I use all the time from all the different modules right here under my favorites. <clears throat> so again, this is my short menu. If I want to see the full menu, as long as I have um, permission or uh, security for those items, I can go here and see the full menu that I am allowed to see. So that is how we um, customize these menus but we can also customize what we see over here on the VAR. So maybe I am an accounts payable clerk and I really, there's a lot of things here that I do not wanna see. So if I click on the three dots down here, I can also edit the bar, the side menu. I can, um, I can go ahead and take out anything that I don't wanna see. So in this case, I'm not gonna do that, but I can remove from this menu items that, oh, I'm sorry, items that I do not wanna see. I can also move them up and down. So for example, if marketing is my thing, I can, I can put it up here. So that is higher up in my menu system. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here. And again, this modifies this menu for me, but everybody else can have a different view of this menu. Probably one of the um, most exciting parts of this modern UI is this search. Acumatica has always had really good search, but in this um, user interface, the search is pretty much Google for Acumatica. It is fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my desktop and I'm gonna go up here to search and I'm going to start typing B-I-L-L-S. And as you can see, 
it is then uh, showing me all the menu items from different modules that have the word bills in it. In addition to that, I can go to the transactions and as you can see, there's um, there's the word bills in four different uh, AR payments. Um, I can go to my help menu and it brings up everything where the word bills is. And then I can go to my files. These are those attachments that you have in your system. So um, in this case, these are all the attachments that are attached to a bill and adjustment screen. So there should be a lot of them, but let's use a different example. Let's say that somebody's on the phone, they just called you, it's a customer, and uh, you ask for their phone number. And their phone number is uh, 868-7171. And when I enter, didn't find any menus with that. But when I go to transactions, it found uh, Bart Howard, that's his, that's his number, and the customer, New York International Beauty School, has that phone number. Um, we can also search for a customer name, and it brings up all the transactions for that customer. So our favorite customer, USA Bartending School. Um, you can see these are all the invoices that are available for that customer right now. So great functionality there. Let's say, for example, we search for purchase order and I'm just looking for information on how to enter a purchase order or whatever. There's my entire help system. Um, I hope most of you know, but in case you don't, this is a wiki and these help topics and this help menu system can be customized to accommodate your specific business processes so that when you hire a new person, um, if there's any questions, he or she can go here and see your specific processes. You can embed videos, you can embed pictures, whatever it is that you need to put in there in order to make sure that people understand how to use the system for your organization. Um, last but not least, one of our stock items here is a Lego set. So I'm just going to type Lego, and as you can see, found the finished good. Uh, there's a couple of uh, invoices for this Lego set, and there's also a purchase order. But where I want to show you is now the file system. So one of the things that we tell our customers is make sure that when you name those files, they have some kind of logic in the naming convention convention that you can then go ahead and find those through the search of the system. So very, very powerful stuff. Anyways, enough for um, search. I am going to now go into sales order processing. And if you don't have sales orders, um, what I'm going to do here works in every screen in the system. I just picked this one. So anywhere where you have a list. So here we have sales records, but if we go to uh, uh, payments, for example, we're going to see the same, the same kind of list, checks and payments. So again, these, these look, these lists um, are available throughout the entire system. Um, I just decided to use sales orders in this case. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is that when you see this icon over here, which is a way for us to filter our data, then we can go ahead and say, okay, um, as you can see, the status of the sales orders, some of them are complete, some of them are open, some of them are back orders. So maybe what I want to do is just look at all the open records. So I'm going to go ahead and say that when the status equals open, 
to go ahead and show me that list. So now here's the list of all my open sales orders. If we're talking about projects, if we're talking about, I mean, anything, whatever, whatever criteria you want to use, any of these fields that you see here, you can say, okay, show me every order for Holly's yarn shop. And it will show me that. The cool thing is that now I can take this view and I can save it and I can call it my open sales orders. And when I save this, I have a couple of options. One is save it for myself. So this is a view that I only see, or I can share it with the rest of the company. So if I check this box, then everybody else will be able to see open sales orders. I can also go here and say, you know what, when I open the sales order screen, I want this tab that I just created to be the default tab that I see when I open that screen. So if I go somewhere else, let's go to the prior screen that we were at, come on. And now if I go back to my sales orders, as you can see, it will open on my open sales orders. And then I can create others, say, uh, uh, let's see, I'm gonna go back to all my records and um, let's see, let's say we want to uh, see every order that has a quantity greater than a hundred. So, And you can get as complicated as you want with this. I'm doing very simple stuff here, but uh, what is that quantity, order quantity here? It's greater than, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And as you can see, now I have all the orders and I still have the capability of Sorting ascending and descending. So, and again, I can create yet another, another view here, another tab, if you want to call it that, that says orders quantity greater than 100. And then I would have that available for viewing in the future. Uh, go ahead. Patricia, there was a, comment there that somebody said the filter up top says all as you're doing this i think they were trying to but, understand oh because i haven't saved it once i save it so right now i'm working on their all records so my filter right now is temporary but if i want to save it and i say um quantity greater than maybe if i can quantity greater than 100 and I save it <clears throat> and apply it, now I'm there. Did that answer that question? I believe so. Okay. So I'm sure that you guys have noticed that we have some stop lighting embedded in these uh, GIs. And um, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So again, sorry. In these um, generic inquiries, we can now go ahead and say, okay, anytime that something happens, and let's say, for, let me give you an example. Anytime that a customer goes over 30 days, then make it yellow. And when they go over 60 days in lack of payment, then make it red. And that gives me that visual um, cue that that I need to do something. Or, you know, a lot of people just are way more visual if they have colors and, and cues that tell them what's going on. 
So now in your generic inquiries, we are able to go ahead and set up these kind of scenarios. So when I go and say customize my generic inquiry, I can now go to the results grid and uh, let me, let's just move this over here to the center so we can see it. And, uh, hold on, sorry. I'm doing a touch screen. I'm actually working out of the Texas office and so I'm working out of my laptop and so here we have set up this conditional filter that says that if the sales order is N, which is open, then make it yellow. And if the sales order is a status is B, which is back order, then make it red. So, and you know, that's just an example here. We can do anything we want. So in this case, when I look at the inquiry, and let's just eliminate the completed ones so that then you can see that all my open and all my back orders I read. And we could make the, the, the completed ones green or, you know, different colors, whatever you guys want, whatever makes sense to you. This color schema per se is what you're gonna find also in the dashboards. And we'll talk about that in a, in a few minutes. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. If not, please ask a question down below. So before I move into something else. Yeah, Patricia, we do have um, a couple questions here. Um, it might be easier for me to open it up for them to was, ask this. Yeah, let's do that. Let's have okay. a conversation. I think I, don't, okay. I like that better. I'm going to unmute everybody. So I, I know there was a couple specific questions. And if it gets too loud, I'll, I will uh, close it up. But you should be unmuted. I think, uh, Patrick, you had a couple questions. Hi, Patrick. We can't hear you. No? Anybody else? Okay, how about now, Patricia? Oh, okay. Yep. Hi. Yeah, I had a question on the open sales orders tab that you had up top. That was the question about the filter. Okay. Now, if you look at the status now, you say all here, and yet the filter you have on here is for open only. Why didn't the filter on you know on the bars change to open only? Because you saved this tab, yeah, as open sales order. Uh -huh. And if you go down one line, it says order type all, status all, date all. Oh, and it's not okay. So all. this is it's... a separate. This is a separate filter. Okay. So. Okay. But as you well, can you see, know. when I create these tabs, when I create these tabs, so before I started playing with it, this is all you had. Correct. Right? So then, and then as you I added a filter for open. And then I added a filter for open. So that goes away, and this is just all my open orders. So that my filter is overriding what's here. The other filter. Yeah. So, but okay. I can I can still go here and say, okay, now it contains uh, it's just a quote. So I can further down sort by, but it's still this is the main filter. This is going to be the list that shows on the screen is going to be based on my tab up here, and then I can apply different things. Obviously the yeah, but the that the one, status you is can't not change gonna, that one. That one right. is not going to work. That one is just right. not going to work. Yeah. Right. Okay, I would have thought that would have just gone to open or just been 
No. Taken off. Okay. Yeah. But this is overriding everything else. This okay. is selecting the records that then I can use these criteria, these uh, filters for. Okay, because it's just a little confusing saying that we have status of all, but it's only opens. Well, okay, good can... enough. Good enough. <laughs> okay. You can change it like that. Anybody else? Any more questions? So we talked about the stop lighting and um, being able to color code different things, whatever that is. We use the status in this case, but it could be anything else. One other thing that they have included in the latest releases is the ability to create pivot tables out of um, Acumatica directly inside of Acumatica. You do not have to go to Excel. So in this case, I'm using the sales order data that we saw earlier. And I said, okay, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and pull this one that I created earlier. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to put the order types on the columns. And I'm going to put the status on the rows. And the values is the total order. So now I can go ahead and view my pivot table directly inside of Acumatica. And I can also make changes here. Um, you know, I think I had, uh, I think I had selected some conditions here. Okay, no. But you have the same conditioning filter available here that you do in any generic inquiry. So now I can create, push it to Excel, create a graph, make it an, a, a refreshable Excel report so that, and by the way, when you create refreshable Excel reports, you will have to enter credentials in order to look at that data. So it's not like you're creating, you're putting out data that uh, for everybody else to see. So this is, this is very cool. This is inside of Acumatica and uh, allows me to do a lot of stuff that we had to go to Excel in the past in order to be able to see it. Any questions regarding pivot tables before I move out of here? And what I would suggest is go ahead and play with it. If you have security permission to, to access that functionality, play with it because you will you will like what you see. One more usability feature that is now um, new or fairly new is the ability to have what we call side panels. So this is another generic inquiry and I need to move this thing out of here. Okay. Um, this is again another generic inquiry. This is based on um, CRM opportunities. And as you can see, we've created a lot of different tabs, one, lost, unassigned, nurture, blah, blah, blah. But the point that I want to illustrate here is what we call the side paneling. So once it's been turned on for a particular generic inquiry, then I can go over here. And it, what's going to do, it's going to show me the record that I am highlighting. So in this case, it's going to show me the opportunity. But it, again, this is available everywhere in the system. So if I change to a different record, then it's going to change the information that's showing on the side panel. If I, ha if I have any dashboards associated with this side panel, I can then go here and it will show me those dashboards as well. I can also close it and continue to work with my generic inquiry. Um, any questions on that? Okay. Other visual settings, as you can see, I've used green instead of our regular blue. This is a really cool feature for people that have multiple branches or multiple companies and they want to 
like you want to have that visual cue that oh i am working on company a versus company v and for example we have a couple of, oh, jesus what happened here have a couple of uh branches here so if i hit my virginia branch then i have totally changed the way that it looks so how do i do that it is so easy um, I am going to go here and search for companies. And I'm going to start with my headquarters. And then here, um, first of all, this is my logo that I'm using for the company. But I can also have different logos at the branch level. So I'm going to go to my main branch. And I'm going to go to the visual appearance. And then here I can enter a different logo if I want. And I can also select the color that I want to use for this particular branch. So if I decided that I am going to just make it red and save and close, once I refresh this, so it's that easy to change the color schema of my branch. Um, there's a couple of other things that I wanted to illustrate. And again, Akimarika has put a tremendous amount of energy into all these dashboards. And these dashboards are um, coming from generic inquiries. And again, that stop lighting, stop lighting that we were talking about. Um, overdue customers, if I click on any of these, it takes me to the GI that generated that information. I can go back. We have one new uh, feature that came out in 2019 R1 and obviously is now included with R2. And it is the ability to have um, text messaging sent to users when something happens. So for example, if you need approval for a particular transaction or, uh, I mean, I can't think of anything right now and <laughs> because I'm on the spot, but when, when you need to inform a person, let's say for example, you assigned a, a CRM opportunity to a salesperson, they, that person can receive a text message saying opportunity one, two, three has been assigned to you. Things of that nature. So that is available now in 2019. Um, and then dashboards, lots and lots of dashboards. Um, we also have, and I don't have it here to show it to you right now, but um, a new series of BI tools, we will be doing another webinar with that. And um, just specifically to show you some of these amazing BI and it's super, um, I would say, inexpensive and great uh, dashboards that are already available for everybody. So this is pretty much all I had uh, ready to present. I'm gonna turn it over to Rick to show you some of the resources that are available with Acumatica. Um, I know that uh, we tell people when we sell them the software, but sometimes, you know, it's always good to have a reminder. Another thing that I wanna make sure is everybody knows that there is a mobile app that's available for Acumatica and there's no additional charge. So everybody who's in this call has the availability of downloading the mobile app and accessing the same data that you access on your laptop, your desktop, your tablet from your phone. And that mobile app allows you, for example, to enter um, expenses that you want reimbursement for, and then you can submit them. They go through a series of approvals and they become payables and nobody has to touch them. In 2019 R2, we will have that functionality available for corporate credit cards. And I know that a lot of people are super excited about that. 
so we will put another webinar on on that and um i had a question and i don't know what is the best way of getting answers from you guys but we were wondering if it's better to have a webinar that lasts maybe an hour, an hour and a half and give you a lot of information or have little 30 minute sessions that show you specific functionality of let's say how to process an expense uh, reimbur for reimbursement from your mobile app all the way to payables and how to set that up. So just have little snippets of information about specific, um, specific topics. So if you want to send me an email and let me know what you prefer and if there's any topics that you would like to see, I think we can start having some more regular uh, kind of webinars that give you really quick information about things that you want to know more about. So having said that, uh, before I turn it over to Rick, any questions from anybody? The mics are open, so please go ahead and ask. Patricia, um, Patrick had a question about um, asking about the search box. Um, does it search the user's screens? It does not look like it in 2018. Does it search the user screens? Uh, yeah, when you did the search before, it brought up different screens. Uh, like if you t type in it and a user's name, would it find it? No, like admin. You know, right now you're running as admin, admin. Yeah, I'm trying to find another another user. Uh, B E C H E R. Yep. See, so it brings up no, it brings up the employee, and that's what 2018 does. It doesn't bring up the user record. You can get to the user from the employee. But, you know, that's a, just a two-step process. Okay. Yep. So I was just wondering if it actually would go to the user record directly. That, well, if it didn't do it here, probably not, but I can ask. It's probably a matter of security that most people don't have access to setting up users, so. That's right, but, you know, you're running as admin here, so I was wondering if it, if is a user is there a right or we have to open it up or is it just that it doesn't look at users let me take a look and i will send you an email okay because it would be easier just to type in the username up there and instead of having to go through the screen and search around for it yep any other questions i don't see any other questions? Okay, Rick. Great. So All right. Yours. You want to display your screen? I do. Give me one minute. You made Beth the presenter. <laughs> Having Beth, you're mouth. now our <laughs> presenter. What are you going to teach us? <laughs> Sorry, my mouse is. Uh... Moving around here. All right, so this is Rick Collins, um, Director of Customer Success, and it's a fairly new role for PC Bennett. As uh, the number of customers have grown, um, we've uh, are kind of taking a proactive approach to wanting to get information, such as these webinars, like Patricia said. Um, and um, presenting more information that's valuable to you. We want to, uh, another goal is to, for me to understand each company's objectives, make sure that we are meeting those, make sure nothing falls through the cracks. Um, so my goal is to be you know, reaching out to, to each one of you and uh, making sure that uh, 
uh, we have a good understanding of, of how we can help. And the other part of that is to um, make sure that you are aware of the features, the functionality that are available within Acumatica. Um, there is a lot of self-service capabilities, and of course, uh, PC Bennett is there to support you, but um, uh, also the ability to, to be able to, uh, to do as much, uh, find information on your own. Um, so that's kind of the, the goals here, and, and uh, I just want to take a few minutes to go through um, a couple areas. I've got uh, a PowerPoint that has some links on it that I'm going to share. So everything I'm going through with you today, I will provide um, separately um, to you in a PowerPoint with the link so you can access uh, all the information. So Patricia, can you see my screen on the Acumatic yep. Open University? Yep, you're okay. good. Great. So first thing I want to just, uh, just talk through is um, not everybody is aware that there is such a thing called Acumatica Open University, and this is available to anyone and everyone. Um, it is an area for um, people to go to get more information, to get training. Um, you have things called the course catalog, learning paths, practice, FAQs. And so um, it's just at openuni.acumatica.com. You sign up using a social media account. So um, that's Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, then you have access uh, to this. So each person in your company can have access to this, uh, this university. And if you, as I scroll down here, you can see there's a lot of um, different areas to, um, to it, getting started, reporting, web services, system administration, customer management. Uh, and if I go to course catalog, you'll see that there are a lot of uh, end user courses. So everything from basic financials, sales, CRM, um, accounting, inventory. And if we drill into one of these in a little bit more detail, you're gonna have a lot of information, um, everything from a very detailed training guide So end user course, CRM operations, so this is just one example, um, and it goes through, it talks about, um, again, in great detail, how you can set that up. Um, so some people like to do that, want the ability to do that. You also have um, training videos. So these are training recordings, and end user training, CRM, sales operations. Um, this was presented by Jessica Gadbois, um, our CRM product specialist at Acumatica. Now this first session, this was an actual training session, it's about an hour and 45 minutes. So you have access to that. And then there's a second one that is also about an hour and a half. So these are very detailed. They go through a lot of, uh, lot of detail on information and setting it up. Um, and then you've got related courses. So if you're interested in the CRM marketing capabilities within Acumatica, um, you can find that information in there too. Now the CRM module is something that, that is broken out by um, marketing and then the sales operations. So you may or may not have that. It is a, a separate module. Um, and then the additional reference, again, it goes into great detail on um, more of a wiki, uh, a help capability um, that is available to you as well. So. This breaks it down. So if you are the type of person that wants to go through and go step by step and have a great understanding of, of how all of these things work, you've got a lot of information here. If you're more apt to um, do, you know, look at videos and understand that way, you've got both those capabilities there. So the Open University, again, you've got uh, learning paths, which is basically kind of give suggestions on, you know, start with the depending on your role, start with the, the um, uh, basic financials or whatever specific area that you're interested in, and it'll make recommendations on where to go through and, and um, how to understand that in more uh, detail. Um, it does have FAQs, and then the other thing that I'll point out is um, the something called job aids. And these job aids are specific to roles. So if you have new people coming on, 
um, it will go through and give them documentation on how to specifically uh, you know, think there are features and functionality that are most, most relevant to an AR person, an AP person, an inventory clerk. So again, these are all available to you. Um, get into importing, exporting, and so it does have, it goes into to, to great detail. So it's an excellent resource, and I found that a lot of people were not aware of this. Um, but I uh, just want to make sure that, um, that you've got that, uh, that information there. So I'm going to move on. The next resource that I want to make uh, people available or aware of is Acumatica Overview Videos. Now, this is on the Acumatica website. And again, I'll be sending these links. Um, but it's just a good area to um, understand where it's got it broken down by product videos. So if you want to peruse these and if there's something that you've been interested in getting more information on, you know, some of these videos are, are just a few minutes long, a couple minutes here, three minute videos. Um, but you can find uh, a lot of information in these videos. You've got... Uh, Information on the development platform, if you're more technical, um, information from analysts and how they view Acumatica in comparison. And again, a lot of webinar videos that uh, have been presented in the past. So these vary from uh, specific customers to, to, um, uh, to uh, a variety of um, information that may be relevant to you. The third thing I'll point out here is um, Acumatica's YouTube channel. Again, this is something that, you know, it's good to take a look at. Uh, I had somebody asking me about the WMS Warehouse Management System Overview, the seven-minute video there. More information on reporting tools and understanding how those, those work. Um, so these, you've got uh, basic overview videos. You know, some of them are fairly relevant. And and um, and within the past few months, uh, you've got it broken down by customer success stories. Product manager Doug Johnson has several uh, videos that are specific to um, shipping intercompany transactions. And then these videos at the bottom, there's a whole set of uh, classic videos that uh, are kind of high-level um, overview videos. So again, a lot of information there. Next thing I'm going to talk about is the content hub at Acumatica. So this is just kind of a, a, an area where you can get information on case studies, uh, data sheets on the different modules, um, testimonials, how customers are using the system, frequently asked questions about Acumatica. Again, webinars, videos, and then presentations. You can also break it down um, you know, by, by things that you are just specifically interested in, um, and also by date. So this has white papers um, and just uh, all sorts of information around Acumatica and maybe how it how it uh, fits in the industry and industry related articles. Uh, next thing I'll talk about is is the the blog, and um, this is a combination of informational articles and a little bit of uh, marketing on on Acumatica's part, but good it's a there you can subscribe to the bi-weekly newsletter and it's just uh, information again to kind of keep you up to date on things that are that are Acumatica related um, you know so, some of these uh, blog posts are um, you know talking about you know relevant information that uh, can gives you little tidbits of information on, on how to best use Acumatica if you're a technical person or if you have people that are technical Within, within, the, uh, within your company, um, there is a whole developer community. And so the Acumatica and its um, XRP platform um, is, is an area where there's a lot of features and functionality. So you've got community forums, um, Backflow. There's a LinkedIn Acumatica user group. There's an Acumatica developer knowledge base. Um, and there's an Acumatica repository. So since Acumatica is an open API, there's open source repositories. Um, people can ask questions, communicate, 
um, get more information specifically around developing on top of the platform. So if you've got anybody in there in the company that's interested in that, there is a lot of uh, access and information to those. Um, the next item is, is the Acumatica help portal. And this is kind of the, the wiki that Patricia was talking about. You can actually go by version. And if I click on, for example, the 2019 R2 version, it's a wiki. It talks about information that's specific to that version. And again, it breaks it down into uh, different categories uh, of the product. And again, it's, it's a wiki and this, these get into great detail, but you can also search, it's got that search functionality that Patricia showed. Um, so you've got something that you're interested in or trying to find out, you can go in and access that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, Acumatica Marketplace. Um, so I have customers asking me about, um, you know, there's there's hundreds of third-party products, and and um, in the Acumatica Marketplace, you get there. There's information if you needed to get specific on, you know, reporting the category. So we we're partners with DataSelf and Belixo. These are great. Um, solutions depending on your requirements to get more information out of the data that's already in Acumatica. Um, so you can search and, and the one thing that we would say is that um, uh, you have of course you have the ability to go in and, and research these and look at these on your own um, but if you do we would recommend that you just check with us first let us know we've got a lot of experience and background information on these third-party products some are, have been around in the ecosystem for a while. Others might be new. Um, we may or, you know, we may have experience with these. So uh, it also can affect the other aspects of your, um, of your Acumatica installation. So we want to be aware, you know, we got to think about when you upgrade, how these things affect, um, affect that upgrade path and things you have to test in that. So, um, but it is a great resource and uh, you can always reach out to us and myself if you have questions or want to know, you know, how you can extend Acumatica. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out is, um, you know, as, as this role expands and we are able to become more proactive, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about, uh, you know, going through information and, and the ability to, um, uh, they, they hear it once and maybe they have new people and they want to make sure they train them right. Um, so it's important, as Patricia said, that there's the wiki that you can document your processes internally um, and also the capability if we can um, can apply uh, little short videos and whether that's the, the consultants or myself going through um, training on how to to um, set something up or, or video uh, these and, and make those available as an MP3 file. Um, it's kind of something that we're I'm, I'm pushing for to make sure that we are documenting those and you're documenting the processes so it's kind of a plug and play with new people and make sure that they're doing things correctly the right way um, I there is one feature that uh, if you've got Windows 10 that I found out and if you hit the Windows screen on your keyboard and, and the letter G there is a uh, game box functionality that will actually allow you to record your screen and if you've got a mic, it will allow you to record your screen and uh, record audio, and you're able to actually um, uh, record. So you can actually make your own little videos um, if you have Windows 10. Um, and it is it's something for Windows Game Box, and it was something I discovered and was able to, uh, to create these little MP3 videos and make those available to folks. So if you want more information on that, let me know. Uh, and then, Finally, from a support standpoint, we want to make sure that uh, you know PC Bennett is your first line of support. Um, what we see happening a lot of times is as you work with a consultant, you may have new questions or issues that come up, and, and we find some people go straight to those consultants and email them, and, and uh, the consultants are obviously very busy working on lots of different projects and, and with different customers. And so sometimes these things get lost. So I'm pushing to make sure that if you have questions, if you have issues, if you could always send those to support at pcbennett.com, that way um, we are able to track those 
and we can make sure that they are being addressed and not falling through the cracks. Um, and uh, I can also, you know, make sure that uh, as I talk with each of you that that we don't have anything outstanding uh, that's sitting out there and, and uh, somebody's getting frustrated because they think it's being worked on, but, but maybe it got lost somewhere. So uh, if we could be mindful of that, that would be fantastic. Um, so Patricia, that, uh, I'm gonna share my screen, my, my contact information here. Uh, it's below, I'm the Director of Customer Success. My phone number, if you have questions, um, if you have suggestions on future webinars, things that you want to see, um, please send those to me, and we will make sure that uh, we try to uh, address those and, and come up with more videos. So any other suggestions to help you? Um, we want you to be self-sufficient uh, as, as much as possible, but also provide you, um, you know, with the features and functionality that uh, are in your, your uh, Acumatica installation. So with that, um, I'm just going to add one thing. Um, the summit, 2020 summit, is coming up in January. If you can, it's going to be in Las Vegas. For those people that love Las Vegas, that's great. If you don't, then um, we'll just have to deal with Las Vegas this year. But uh, it is a great opportunity to hear and see where the company is going, meaning Acumatica, where the product is going to talk to other customers that are using the software. Um, I think that everybody that attends would say that they get a lot of value out of it. So there's also, so there's two days of summit, which, you know, there's a high level information and then there's training in the next three days for specific modules and specific things. So um, if you can attend, let us know. We'll start uh, sending invites to everybody here pretty quickly. I know that Akimarika has been sending some emails. And then last but not least, just remember that if you are on our customer care, then you know we have training available that's included in the customer care. So take advantage of that and let us help you with whatever it is that you need. Um, you know, whether it's uh, how to set up new functionality that just came out or whatever it is, you know, limited training and limited support and upgrades. Just to make sure that everybody knows that uh, if you're, especially if you're a SaaS customer, you really need to be up to date with your software. If you are using software that's no longer um, supported by Acumatica, they will increase your renewal for supporting an older version. So let it, you know the money is now not part of the equation. I understand that it takes time, and just know that Acumatica is working very hard to making sure that these upgrade processes are easier and easier every time. So. Um, Let's go ahead and make sure that you guys are in the latest and greatest version of Acumatica. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we have two minutes to spare. If anybody has any questions, please go ahead and ask. I think pretty much everybody knows my email, but if not, uh, Patricia B at PC Bennett, or you have Rick's email right there on your screen. Just we want to make you uh, more successful with the software to to make sure that you're taking advantage of the investment that you've made. So let us help you uh, make sure that that happens. And thank you so much for your time today. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.